Convention City is a 1933 American pre-code sex comedy film directed by Archie Mayo and starring Joan Blondell, Guy Kibbe, Dick Powell, Mary Astor, and Adolf Menjou. The film was produced by Henry Blank and First National Pictures and distributed by Warner Brothers. Due to its racy content, Convention City was held from circulation after the Motion Picture Production Code was enacted in 1934. Prints were subsequently ordered to be destroyed by studio head Jack L. Warner. The film is now considered lost and has become one of the more coveted lost films because of its reported racy content. The plot revolves around the convention of the Honeywell Rubber Company in Atlantic City. Throughout the film, the employees of Honeywell Rubber are mainly concerned with drinking and sex. President J.B. Honeywell, Grant Mitchell, is to choose a new company sales manager. T.R. Kent, Adolf Menjou, and George Ellerby, Guy Kibbe, are two salesmen who both want the job. However, they both get into trouble. T.R. is discredited when jealous saleswoman Arlene Dale, Mary Astor, interferes with his attempted seduction of Honeywell's daughter Claire, Patricia Ellis, and George attempts to seduce Nancy Lorraine, Joan Blondell. The position of sales manager is bestowed upon a drunken employee as a bribe after he catches J.B. about to visit Daisy LaRue, exterminator. During production, the film faced censorship problems from the Motion Picture Association of America due to its risque content and dialogue. Joan Blondell later said, We were forever doing things among ourselves with double meanings. Finally, they would have people in the front office just watch for what we'd say off-color. Due to the lewdness of the film and lack of influence of the Studio Relations Committee, which was supposed to control objectionable content, Convention City and films like it led to the enforcement of the production code, overseen by Joseph Breen. The film's producer, Henry Blank, later said, Single-handedly, I brought on the whole code. Yeah, ask Joe Breen, he'll tell you. Ask him about Convention City. The code had been created in 1930 at the beginning of the Depression, but was rarely enforced as financially strapped studios often overlooked its authority in the desire to make more risque pictures that were good box office. As a result of the code, the film was taken out of circulation when its theater run ended. The controversy surrounding the film prompted exhibitors and theater convention organizers to request the film. In 1936, Warners attempted to re-release Convention City in a censored form, but Breen deemed it beyond redemption and would not grant it the seal of approval it needed for it to be shown in theaters. Warners then reportedly ordered the film to be destroyed. However, Ron Hutchinson, the editor of the newsletter The Vitaphone Project, discovered that a print of the film was screened in 1937, nearly three years after the ban had been enacted, indicating that at least one print had not been taken out of circulation. Further evidence that not all prints had been seized and destroyed was found in the August 29, 1942 edition of the Spanish newspaper ABC. According to the advertisement, the film was being screened at a theater in Madrid. In the late 40s and 50s, Warner Brothers destroyed many of its negatives due to nitrate film decomposition. Studio records indicate that the negative of Convention City and filmography was marked junked at 1227.48. No prints of the film are known to currently exist, though rumors that private collectors own foreign prints have continued to surface as late as 1999. However, it was also re-copyrighted by United Artists Association in 1963. The original screenplay still survives in the Warner Brothers script archives. The George Eastman House has a full key book of over 220 production and publicity stills from the feature. And while nothing of the theatrical release has yet been located, a few minutes of film survives. In the mid-1990s, a member of the Vitaphone Project, who works for Getty Images, was screening a 35mm film collection that included many establishing and background shots from Warner Brothers. 
he came across nearly 20 minutes of silent footage that was intended to be used in Convention City. Extended shots on the boardwalk, the steel pier, amusement rides, and much more were included. In addition, there were multiple takes of shots of trains approaching the Atlantic City Station. These were likely intended for Convention City's opening titles or first scenes. There were also multiple takes of staged scenes, including the conventioneer's arrival at the Atlantic City Station, with the Honeywell Rubber Company banner on the train car's side. There is even a double for a drunken Hugh Herbert. Mm-hmm. 